Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. We'll be continuing on with our Moto3 Championship, right here in Jerez for the Spanish GP. So the front row, we've got Pedro Acosta, McPhee and Masia, Rodrigo Garcia and Toba, Binder, Artiga, Sasaki, Suzuki, Antonelli, Alcoba, Mino, Onchu, Guevara, Fanati, Foggia, Yamanaka, Fernandez, Kofler, Dupasquier, Nepa, Tatai, Felon, Farad, Izdihar, Salach, Ricardo Rossi, Yuki Kuni, and Grant at the back of the grid. So we look to the lights for round five of the Motor 3 World Championship, and starting from the back of the grid is Grant, and decent start. We will be utilising power setting 3 for just a little while, just to get us off the line, get us into the battle, get us into the thick of things, and then we'll drop it down to power setting 2. So going into the first corner, everyone seems to be safe so far. Looks like everyone's through, doesn't look like anyone's going to be causing any carnage. We have dropped the power setting down to 2 now, and it will remain on 2 for the rest of this Grand Prix as we get between some of the Skull Tag Riders there. Goodness me, teammate to the left-hand side of us there, that is uh, Adrian Fernandez. We then have uh, some of the sick 58 riders there as well, like Lorenzo Fellon going around the outside of him. Now we've got uh, Dupasquier as well of us. He's got uh, just in front of us just a little bit there, the number 50. As we go up in the inside for Cito Pons, potentially, we have the right hand side. Beautiful, I love that move there. They tend to go a little bit wider, but we'll go in tighter. Utilising the slipstream with the many riders ahead of us. Carlos Tatai to our left. Koffler a little bit just further ahead. We're going to be outbreaking him in a minute's time. Fanati's there as well. Contact me there with Nepa. Goodness me. Carlos Tatai down. Tatai's down into the Danny Pedroza corner. That is his Grand Prix over. Goodness me. Maximilian Koffler giving me a big shove there. That big don't argue. We're now on the rear of our teammate Adrian Fernandez. I don't know if that's Adrian. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it because he is Spanish after all. So we now go up to the inside. We have the Jorge Martinez Aspar. Lorenzo fell on on the right hand side of the tyre for Angel Nieto. He will be beaten in a moment's time. Now up on the inside for Pelaqui, right on the rear of Maximilian Koffler. We did not appreciate that from the CIP Green Power Man as we oh, <laughs> cut his nose off there as we now have Dupasquier ahead of us. Coming around the outside for the man with the IXS leathers. Oh, goodness me. Our very first track limits warning of today's Grand Prix. Coming up the inside of the Dupasquier, can the car expert Brustal Racing team don't think they're in Motor 3 next season, so don't expect to see them after the update, I guess. There's Jason Dupasquier alongside us, but of course he will have the drive, and he does have the line for the inside turn, turn one, but he does not take it. Smart man. I went a little bit to the right there, because I expected him to touch my rear for some strange reason. I don't fancy uh, a replication of Portimao. Circuit John McPhee, which we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen any of the Patronus Sprinter boys. Just got Romano Fanati and Andrea Migno ahead of us. Of course, I love this entry going into here because into turn four we can get the outside line. Ooh, a little bit wide onto the rumble strip. You have to be careful on the rumble strip on this game because sometimes they can be really, really treacherous. Now we have Dennis Foggio up the inside, or at least on the outside, let's say. Dennis on two just a little bit, so it's a battle of the Dennises. Go Big Den to the left and Big Den to the right. Oh my goodness. Can we go for the inside? Dennis on Chu, the Turkish rider. Beautifully done. Absolutely beautifully done that. Sasaki's gone wide, so we'll pinch his spot as well. Sasaki was into 14th or 13th. Now we're back to 14th. He's now up to 13th. Can we go for the inside of the Tech 3 KTM rider? Beautifully done. Now the Onjetta, Sick 5018. Goodness me, we've got another one. Brilliant stuff going into the Jorge Martinez Aspar corner, but Suzuki fights back. That is brilliant from one of the championship protagonists for this season. Can we go around the outside and Zian Hel Nieto? Yes, maybe. No, brilliant. Oh, but we might get the cutback. Brilliant. Oh, contact made. Oh, that is a good move, though. I'm pleased with that one. Get on the right-hand side of the side for the Crivier corner. Guevara's ahead of us. Alcoba just a little bit further ahead. Of course, we've had some ding-dongs with Alcoba this season. Just like John McPhee in real life. We're having a good old punch-up in the game with him. Antonelli's ahead of him as well, and there's Xavi Artigas. For some reason in this game, Artigas is way better than Foggia. I think that needs to be fixed. And of course, uh, Ta Toba sets the fast up in the race. Never mind, it's already been beaten by Grant. It's an hour 148.936. Now let's remind ourselves, we did start from the back of the grid. We started dead last, 29th out of 29, and we are already up to 12th place by the third lap. It's looking Binder-esque, isn't it? Brad Binder did this in 2016, many years ago. Can we do the same here today? I really hope we can. Ivan, Gu Ivan Guevara ahead of us. Can we get close to him? He's Sergio Garcia's teammate. Gets a big nudge. Brilliant stuff on the inside. Around the outside of him. We're still into power setting two, by the way. 
not abusing power setting three, or at least I don't believe I have as Contour! Contact made there with Alcoba, pushing him wide onto the rumble strip, but thankfully he didn't actually go on it. We're in a sandwich here between a Honda and a KTM. Goodness me, we're going to touch in a minute's time. Brilliant stuff. Who's going to be the late on the brakes? It's going to be Nico Antonelli as he gets over the inside from the Danny Pedroza corner. Formerly known as Drysack as we push Nico Antonelli back now. Goodness me. Things are getting heated up here in this Moto3 Grand Prix. As always, of course, as Binder is a little bit further ahead. He's just a position ahead of Xavi Artigas, the Leopard Racing Honda team. We're going to be chasing him down any moment now. Get into his slipstream. Get into the right-hand side for Angel Nieto. Really close in on him. That's it. Beautifully done. Now up on the right-hand side. We'll follow the same lines. Get into his slipstream. Then potentially for the Crivier corner. Or even Ferrari. Or even save it for Lorenzo. It's depending which corner we want to go at. I do fancy this one around the outside. Though I've not made... Oh, oh, oh. Wide onto the rumble strip course, there's a little bit of time there, but we might be able to go to the inside, around the outside into Lorenzo Corner. Not really a track you can go around the outside too much on, but you know me, I do love a good move around the outside, so if it can be done, I'll do it. Oh, oh, oh will I ever? Onto the rear of Xavi Artigas, crossing the line in a moment's time, it's a 149.042 for us. Very close to the fastest lap, but we go around the outside of Artigas. Just when I mention you can't really do it, we do it. Classic Notre style, still in power setting 2. And I must say, Power Setting 2 is making this one a lot more interesting. I do feel like I probably could have already made it to the front if we were utilising Power Setting 3. So I think, from now on, that's the key. And look at this rider gaggle ahead of us. A line of seven riders about to make it eight, and if Xavi Artigas sticks with us, we're about to make it nine. It's going to be like the conger here going around in uh, Jerez. Getting close enough to the inside line there. Oh, careful, that's it. Oh! We abused the track limits there, and the game said otherwise. Thank you very much. Maybe that's for the punishment we got in Austin, which I still think, to this day, was a very, very unfair. I wheelied, and I went on to the... Well, anyway, yeah, you know the drill. We've seen it before. We've actually got to talk about this race right now, because we don't have much more chance to, to really speak about anything, because Kai Totoba is getting reeled in. Tenth by tenth from Grant. The Husqvarna man is on a charge on an absolute mission, starting from the back of the grid. October 7th, Binder 6, so John McPhee will be in there as well. Rodrigo makes a lunge, he's now ahead of, uh, is that John McPhee? I do believe it is. Rodrigo up into the podium positions, he's now up into second place, he gets ahead of Masia. Great stuff from him. Pedro Acosta has led this Grand Prix from start to finish as of yet, but of course it is only four and a half laps in. Going around the outside of Kaiser Tobe. I really want to make this move work. We're going around the outside, brilliant! Put that in the Dots Race archive. Excellently done. We now have Darren Binder in our sights, there's Sergio Garcia, John McPhee into fourth, Masia third, Rodrigo second, and of course Pedro Acosta, the young man, is still leading this Grand Prix. He's been impervious as of yet, but we have just set the fast lap of the race, a 148.529. Yeah, oh, we're coming. We're on a charge here, ladies and gentlemen, we really are. I'm going to try and get into Darren Binder's slipstream, maybe go up on the inside. No, we're not going to be close enough for Michelin. That would have been very impressive. Oh, he cut his nose off, though. Goodness me. He had to lift up. If he weren't going to lift up there, he would have had a fistful, or at least a headful, or a chest and shoulder full of this Dunlop tyre. Goodness me. Now around the outside of Sergio Garcia. Oh, we're on a charge. We're absolutely killing it now, guys. Really killing it. Into the Cito Ponds. We're going to get excellent drive out of here. Follow the slipstream of John McPhee. Masia, Rodrigo. Acosta's actually pulling away a little bit. Maybe he's thought... I better move. These guys are too busy mucking about. A little bit out of shape on the brakes there. I don't know if you noticed, but the rear tyre was up in the air ever so slightly. That's from braking a little bit too aggressively, let's say. So we now get closer and closer to John McPhee. Do we go all fisticuffs? Do we try and get revenge on him? What happened in Portimao? Not required, potentially, of course. We are still leading the championship with the still the championship favourites. John McPhee, he's the one who's got to impress us. Not the other way around. But I do fancy a lunge. Oh... But he's gone wide, though, he's gone wide. Oh, can we take advantage? Can we go with the inside for Pelaqui? Oh, it's close. Oh, he just had to lift up, otherwise he would have been leaning on these Dainese knee sliders then. Close enough, but we got through. Alex Grivier corner, navigated to perfection. Rodrigo into second place. He's had a great race this season. Really impressed with him and this uh, year's performance. Now going into the left-hander for the Jorge Lorenzo. We've seen so many carnage and skirmish moments in Lorenzo. Will we see any more? Massier and Grant battling again. God, we've seen some contact between these two guys. Two men who just want the same piece of tarmac every single time they step foot into a Grand Prix arena. 
Now going on to the right hand side for turn one. Getting closer and closer to Rodrigo. The Honda man trying to pull away, but he can't escape the Husqvarna. The Husqvarna's closed him in. He's reeling him in lap by lap. Now on to the left hand side for turn three. Of course, Mark Marquez met his demise here last year. We're not making our demise. We're still right on the rear tyre of Gabriel Rodrigo. The Argentine is going to have to do everything he can to stop us. But never mind, the Comali Grassini rider has been beaten. We are now up into second place. Now it's just Pedro Acosta. Pedro Acosta, oh my goodness. Get back here, young man. You are not escaping us. Get back here. <laughs> Get into the clutches. Underneath the DHL sign, breaking for the Nana Pedroza corner. For turn six, gone a little bit wide there, but thankfully Rodrigo isn't close enough to take a little bit of a snap up in the inside. So we're still okay as things stand, but Pedro Acosta, 1.4 seconds that young man's managed to develop a lead off. Pretty impressive stuff from the young Spaniard. 1.2, it's still teetering around 1.2, 1.3 seconds. If by the end of the lap we can get within one second, then I'm pretty confident we can chase him down pretty soon. So into the Angel Nieto a little bit wide. Now Pelequi for turn 10. On the right hand side, pushing out of the corner underneath the Red Bull sign. One second is the gap now from uh, Acosta to Grant. The British rider is charging the 26 year old versus the 16 year old. We, who's going to win this one? It's a battle of wits against battle of determination. Now into turn 13, Jorge Lorenzo corner. Navigated pretty well. We went a little bit wide there. Cost us a little bit of time, but it's still okay. We're going to be three tenths of a second slower than the record which we set out earlier on, which was, of course, a 148.529. Very fast lap, but this one was still a decent lap with a 148.916. As Costa is not getting away, is he? He is not getting away. I'm pleased to say that. I did fear that he might have the oomph, he might have the drive, he might have the gumption, but thankfully we have the goal and we have the eagerness to try and chase him down. I'm to the left hand side for turn four. Tire degradation's looking a little bit worse for wear, but it's not too concerning. Of course, if you watch the qualifying session and the practice session just a couple of hours before, you will know that I did a lot of time building onto the tires that were already heavily damaged. And of course, we started from the back of the grid due to a little bit of an error in the game, but that doesn't really matter. Right now, we've had a terrific race trying to do our best Brad Binder impression from 2016, just five years ago. Danny Bedroza corner navigated pretty well. Oh, Akiayo and the team will be concerned now. There's going to be some concerned and re really distraught faces in there now. The Husqvarna garage will be pleased. Max Biage is going to be pleased. These boys are getting closer and closer to taking another victory. Pedro Costa might have left a gap. Oh, not quite. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about it. Where do we want to go for the lunge? I do feel that we have the pace to get through and just disappear, but I might stick around, you know. Maybe I'll play with him a little bit. See where he's strong, see where he's weak. Coming around the outside. Ooh, a little bit wide of the rumble strip. We must avoid that rumble strip. It seems to be killing us every single time we go on there. We lose a lot of time. We're now going to the left-hand side. Get closer and closer. Really pushing the pressure on this young man. Let's see how he copes under immense pressure from the number 47. Is he going to do it? 37 versus 47 across the line. Ooh. <laughs> we were into the 49 for the first time in a while. I guess we have slowed down a little bit because we're trying to play the chess game now. Trying to play the watching game. Waiting for him to make a mistake. Or we'll just continue to push and we'll make our own move. It's entirely up to us. We, uh, I think we hold the key to the success here. I think Pedro Costa is a sitting duck. It's waiting for the moment. Oh, as we get closer and closer, a cost smart move to sit up there. Don't think you want to be leaning on a Dunlop tyre. No way. We go a little bit wide, but Pedro Acosta with the inside. Brilliant stuff from the young man. He's showing he has the gumption to fight back. The 26-year-old, the world championship leader, wants this victory. It's been two races since we last to sit the carver on the top step. We want to do it again here. Now onto the right-hand side for turn six of the Danny Pedroza corner. Getting closer and closer and closer. Oh my goodness. This is getting really tight now. I know I can get past him. It's just a matter of time, a matter of when. Where do we want to go for it? But I don't want to just disappear into the distance and completely ruin a chance of a cracking finish. As Costa fights back. Costa now up into the lead for the Jorge Martinez Aspar. Can we get on to the right hand side? Oh, a little bit. Out. Oh, did you see the rear skip then? That's someone who is really eager on the brakes. Oh, 
I tell you what, for a Moto3 machine, these brakes are phenomenal. It really chucks the bike to the left or to the right if you try and lean and brake at the same time. Can we go around the outside of Acosta? Give him the big don't argue. Go around the... Oh! <laughs> we definitely thought about it. Acosta and Grant are going absolutely toe-for-toe -to -toe here. Head-to-head. -head, giving everything they've got. There's a saying that means they're basically fighting and giving no inch tooth and nail. You know what I'm trying to say. But onto the rear of Pedro Acosta. We have three laps remaining, guys. It's... Oh, my goodness. Where do I want to go for the move? Do we try and save it to the end? We'll run it wide into turn one. Maybe I should stop being so cocky because we lose a little bit of time there to Acosta. And maybe perhaps another mistake and Acosta could have this one in the bag. Let's not get too cocky. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's try and stay within our remit. Stay within where, our, where we're comfortable. Stay in our parameters. And then chase him down. Of course, we did lose five tenths of a second to Acosta. But look at the charge. We're already back to it. We're already trying to chase down the young Spaniard. The Argentine behind will... Gladly, gladly take 1.3 seconds behind for a podium finish, but I don't think he'll be too happy, considering he didn't manage to fight in this battle. If he stayed with me, then it wouldn't have been so bad. My goodness me! Last of the late breakers has just inherited a new person. Pedro Acosta, welcome to the franchise of being last on the breaks. That was brilliant. He outbreaked me! <laughs> and I'm pretty good on the breaks. I did a breaking guy tutorial, Pedro. Goodness me. This man still has his braces in under there. Good, and he's still going for it. He's going to beat me. I'm 10 years older. No, we're not allowing it. Look at him sliding the rear into the Angel Nieto. Can't sing this guy's praises enough. Going on the right-hand side for Pelaqui. He might have given it up now, though. His tyres affecting him like it did in Portimao. He began to struggle even in Austin as well. He went backwards into Austin, Texas. Is he going to go backwards here? He's doing everything he can. At the very least, he can still be very proud of a podium. As we go up on the inside for Lorenzo Cor... Ooh. Oh, yes, we're going to go for it. I didn't think we went... Yes! We, we, we fainted it, and then we eventually went. Brilliant! Grant into the lead. Oh, and Acosta's fighting back! <laughs> the Red Bull KTM IO team is flying way quicker than the Husqvarna. Of course, we aren't utilising power setting three. And maybe he's got a bit of extra oomph in the tank, but we're on to the penultimate lap. Contact made! Contact made into the penultimate lap into turn one. Now turn two for the Michelin corner. Oh, don't touch my rear tyre! Oh, my God. I had flashbacks. I had flashbacks of Portimao, guys. <laughs> wow. Now onto the left-hand side for turn four. Acosta is leading, but for how long? Gabriel Rodrigo is only down by seven tenths of a second now. Maybe he could get himself into there. Maybe the Argentine can get fisty cuffs with us, ch chuck his elbows out. As we now go into the Cito Ponds, getting closer and closer to Pedro Acosta. Okay, we were toying with him earlier on, I confess, but now he's got into another gear. He is ready. He's, oh, he's built for the fight. Again later on the brakes, going into turn six. Brilliant stuff into the formerly known corner as Dry Sack. I do miss calling it Dry Sack, it sounds quite iconic, but never mind. No more iconic than Danny Pedroza. We're going to turn seven. Look at the speed! Around the outside. Oh, we cut his nose off, but Acosta will find back, surely. Acosta up at the inside. Excellently done. These two men. Oh, what a show they're putting on here in Jerez. We have the guy who started in pole position, Pedro Acosta. Oh, contact made there. Can we go to the inside of Pelaqui? Yes. No. Maybe. No, not quite. And the guy who started the back of the grid, the world championship leader... It's unbelievable. Who who the hell seen this coming? Uh, just don't lie, you didn't see it coming, and neither did I. Out of Ferrari, we have the speed. Lorenzo Corn has been navigated. It didn't work last time. I'm going to go for it here. This time, oh, wide. Both riders are wide. Oh, we lift him up. Brilliant. We should have got him now. Oh, my God. He's back again. The young man, the 16-year-old, fights back once again. He's now going up at the inside to turn one. We go around the outside. He pushes us wide. Magnificent defensive positions there from Pedro Acosta. He made himself really, really wide there. Stonewall defense from the young man. Now onto the left-hand side for the final time of asking. Turn three. Navigated well. Turn four to be navigated just as well, perhaps. On the rear tyre now. Yes, getting closer and closer to the Red Bull KTM. We've said closer around 60 times in this video, I swear. And now going on the right-hand side for Cito Pons. Again, getting closer and closer. If you have any nails left, I'm well impressed. But we get closer again. Onto the rear hand side. Oh, up in the inside. It's got to be turn six. Here we go. Turn six. Danny Pedroza corner on the brakes. 
we've run it wide. We've run it way too wide. We're off the track effectively. We need another ticket to get back onto the circuit. Now going to the left hand side for turn nine, turn seven. I can't even get the numbers right. Getting closer and closer to Acosta. We have to get this one right. We are so quick going into Pelaqui and into Ferrari, even into Crivier. We have to get him back. He's on the final lap. He's got four tenths of ahead of us. Five tenths of a second behind to Gabriel Rodrigo. I've got no voice left. We go into turn 10 for Pelaqui. Can we do it? Can we get him into the Lorenzo corner? That's the only place we can beat him. And we're not allowed to use power sending three, so we cannot get that extra drive. Whoa! Contact made there. Coming around the outside. Not going to happen. Into Ferrari. Now we've got him. We've got him. We've got brilliant drive here. Up into the Lorenzo corner. Pushed him wide a little bit. Excellent. Block pass. Classic block pass. Into the title line. Full acceleration. Absolutely go for it. Have we got him? Oh, it's going to be a connect to the, to the line. Oh, we done it. What a win. What a finish. Grant beats Acosta by 98 thousandth of a second. And Gabriel Rodrigo hangs on for third place. Goodness me. From the back of the grid to the victory. Only on Dr. Ace's channel, I swear. <laughs> So now we're going to look at the championship standings. Grant leads by 14 points ahead of Gabriel Rodrigo, but Pedro Acosta moves up by five positions. He's now 53 points behind. Quick look at the team championship. Petra Sprinter Racing still lead the way. They're 18 points ahead of Team Grassini Moto 3, and the Stella Garda Max Racing Team trails by 23. So what a race, a magnificent finish, starting from the back of the grid, only utilising power setting two, and a magnificent finish with Pedro Acosta. What a race, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. I have no voice left, so that's going to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Race upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.